<laughs> just let me right in and hit the record button. I assume we're recording. All right, Kirk. Okay, so back at you here. Um, importance of carbon as a base when deciding fertility and crop planting. This is from Tall Drink of Water. <laughs> Good old Mason. Oh, Mason. Yep. Tell you what, I love every, all seven foot of that man. <laughs> Dude, when I first met him, he was bringing product down. I can't even, don't even remember what. Yep. But he got out of the pickup and I go, oh my God, that dude is tall. <laughs> you just kind of start, just, you're just, just looking no up. You're like, yeah. dang, son. Yep. I love that guy. <laughs> um, it was the importance of carbon because we, we ended the last podcast with, uh, the carbon has become the base of your guys's program. Yeah, it's pretty much everything. Like Talk it's, about it's that. The most important thing. How'd you get there? How do you implement that? Well, it's just limiting factor is water. If you have more carbon, you can hold more water. I mean, it's simple as that, really. Um, and you can do it. You can grow a better crop at a lower input too. I mean, just feeding feeding the biology with the carbon. So some people are going to say, well, why don't you cover crop? Well, we do. A <laughs> little bit. But, um, what is your greatest risk? I know the answer to this. What's your greatest risk of having cover crops in the West? Well, using up the water. I mean, okay. yeah. But, and man, people but, and will also, say, this it, is, man, this is going to piss people off. <laughs> I already know this is going to piss some people off. So if you're real touchy about cover crops, just, just skip a few minutes. People say, well, you know, diverse cover crop mix will – hold more water culture more water yeah i mean it's a growing crop i mean it pulls water it pulls water yeah yeah now it can can it create an environment that does hold more water when Absolutely. you when and, you and get water yes I'd, I'd rather have a cover crop out there than ground sift and blow oh absolutely i mean if a ground because if it doesn't grow if it doesn't make anything the cover crop you're out the cost of seed yeah. You know, so you're not, it's not like you've got a ton of money in this thing. Well, and if you have ground blow, that's automatically at the very least 30 bushels gone. And also your weed control's gone. That's the place the weeds are going to grow. Okay. 30 bushel gone. How do you mean? Like, uh, just 30 bushel off of your crop, whatever crop it is, wheat, corn, milo. If dirt's blowing around. Yeah. It's, it's bad. Okay. So number one rule is just keep the ground from blowing. That's hard. That's easier said than done. Trust me. Yep. But um anything we just we just i would love to do some strip till sure. can't do it it's gonna blow uh, strip till will blow oh yeah it, really i mean on dry land yeah on our soils absolutely it won't blow on irrigated but you know that's got a little higher residue content a little bit different you can water it to keep it from blowing okay um so yeah, I I would love to do a little bit of strip till, but it's just not going to happen. I, I see it. Um, a neighbor, he's actually gone full in on it, and uh, boy, it it'll it'll get going on his hilltops. But he's he's making it work. It seems like for for right now, we'll see if he sticks with it. But okay, um, carbon. Yeah, yeah. So basically, we just kind of knew we had on that field corn there uh so and another thing like when we say no nitrogen on that like soil applied nitrogen there's a say very little there, there's a there's a big correlation of corn population and nitrogen needs like everybody's going to talk about you need this much nitrogen yes. to raise this many bushels right i'm looking Amen. at more as it it's you need if you're planting this population then you're gonna have to bump up uh, some nitrogen but if you're low like us it it i should have showed you this spot on another field i had a little mess up with the planter okay and i thought i was on my 90 degree line i, I wasn't it was a little bit of an angle so i, I planted and uh i was like shoot i'm going off in this weird direction so i switched it back turned my section control off on just like this, I don't know, 30 foot bit. And uh, I just planted straight through it. So, you know, there's 26,000 out there in that spot okay. on dry land. Absolutely Whoa. horrible nitrogen deficient. Okay. And the rest of the field is awesome. Man, <clears throat> I'm going to go on a 
micro rant here. Yep. Because that is all we talk about as farmers is I raise this many bushel per acre on this many pounds of nitrogen. We don't, we, we talk about the end result. We don't talk about the beginning result. It's like, what if, what if you had X many, X many thousand seeds per pounds of nitrogen? What if there was a ratio and maybe there's a ratio out there. I'm probably is. There might be, but like, I haven't seen it and I haven't researched it enough. Really, So, and I put my money where my mouth is on that because uh, up on my circle, you know, I'm normally planting 30,000. This year I dropped it way back at 25. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I should be able to get away with less nitrogen and still raise decent corn. I'm putting a 150 pounds on. Uh, that was soil applied, okay. split applied with urea, but. Looks good. Uh, we're just out well, it. it was perfect. I mean, no nitrogen deficiency no. out there. Healthy plants. So, Healthy plants. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what if it was like, okay, for every every thousand seeds I drop on corn, I need, I don't know, just literally pulling this number out of thin air, 10 pounds. You know, so if you're dropping 12,000 pounds, 12, 120 pounds in, you yep. know, now I know that's not accurate because... There's guys in the West raising 100 bushel wheat or 100 bushel corn on, you know, sub 10 pounds. Yep. On if if the climate's right. Yep. Um, I know guys that are raising, you know, out in Tennessee, 260 corn on I think 150 pounds in. You know. Uh, well, I I will say, wheat's a little bit different animal, but at the same time, in 2021, there's a great wheat year. We grew field averages of wheat over 100 that had 50 pounds of in streamed on sure so sure um anyway i oh man that's a whole side tangent oh it is we got so much more to get through but car any more on carbon no it just holds more water more oxygen that's the biggest return on yield that we see i mean in humics yeah yep. we're yeah just to clarify we are talking humics yep. here um yep. alex alex has become a bigger fan of humics yep. you know you're i mean it was fun talking to your dad just about carbon well so like uh kind of when we weren't, when we were just trying to figure out a bunch of stuff out at that point, but in 2019, just had a bunch of yellow corn on sandy hilltops and stunted plants horribly. And that they had good nitrogen amounts on it, you know? So we're thinking, oh, it just leached, you know, we're nitrogen deficient, but it just went anaerobic. That's all it was, was anaerobic soil, had no oxygen in it ground wasn't functioning at all and that's what that's what we got when we started running a little bit of humic with our in back then we're like oh wow there's some uh you know we're seeing a pretty big response on those spots doing that we're like okay we're actually holding the nitrogen in place right that was the initial thought well now we're still not putting in on those spots and we're putting more humic on there and we're seeing the bigger response now talk to me about humic and milo well or carbon and milo would you say carbon and milo talk let's shift from corn over to milo because okay dude, we have we got a clip through some of these. don't <laughs> like don't cut short don't cut short for time's sake um but you know the first podcast burned up really fast and yeah. we didn't even get to the list of questions that that mason sent over or the other stuff that we wanted to talk about we haven't even talked about class combines yet <laughs> we gotta make time for that we so. do we do but it, but yeah, so this is our first year putting the dry humic on on the Milo, and well, I shouldn't say that we've used other dry humics, but at a lot lower rates because it costs so much. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought they did they did all right, I guess you know, not gonna say it was mind blowing, but um, this year we're running singulars dry humic, and we're putting on instead of eight pounds thirty. I did 50 on my irrigated circle, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, up on my sand where I got, didn't get any rain through, you know, since it was planted all the way through first of August. I mean, I just thought that Milo was done, but you know, it come up, I'll always have these hilltops that are stunted, yellow, messed up, look, I mean, you, you just drive by on the road, you think, uh, in deficiency, you know? bad farmer <laughs> type deal you know sure it's like what can i do to fix that and putting on humic at the higher rate i mean i really didn't have any of those spots i mean sure 
now that it didn't get any rain, it's all stressed out. Yeah, they're not going to put a big head on. But hell, I got it to put a something out there. You know, it made something, and the plants are actually green and healthy. Sure, sure, the bottom half, the leaves burned up, but it didn't rain, so there's nothing I can really do about that. Right. Let, but but what I have out there is not a stunted little yellow plant. It is if it had gotten rain, it would have made pretty good Milo out there. Yeah, just the fact that it grew something, in the in the conditions yeah, that are oh, out there is wild. Yeah, I mean, there, that one field, it might still make 50. That's an average crop, and it got no rain right. when it was trying to head. Sure. It was just, I couldn't believe that, really. Sure. All right, anything so, else on carbon? Oh, I don't know. That's, we're just going to see now using it on the wheat crop again. Some fields, will this will be the second year of it, so we'll be really interested to see what that does sure see if it can build build more oxygen is a limiting fact i should have warned you about these <laughs> you just... guys if you like the information that you've seen so far go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our youtube channel be sure to subscribe there it's also on all the major pla podcast platforms um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms tiktok instagram facebook etc check it out for a lot more content